Stop me if you've heard this one before. The Blue Jackets have got more injuries. We're going to talk about what they do to overcome that on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we getting started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube. What else left that you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guarantees. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Got a handful of things to talk about today. Um, I want to talk about the game against the Sabres. We've got to talk about injuries. We've got to talk about Juracek making his season debut. Um, and I want to kind of talk a little bit about how long this team can outscore the goaltending that they're getting right now. Because my guess is not, like, much longer. But I am having fun while it's happening. So, a few things to get through. Um, I liked much of what I saw against the Sabres. Um, again, it was very much a team that outscored its goaltending woes. Um, it kind of they, they picked up after um, a while, but winning 6-4 to four over the Sabres, um, and I think it was, what, like 25 shots that Tarasov faced? So, like, four goals on 25 shots is not great um it is better than what the buffalo goalie did which was um i want to say six goals on 24 shots i'm just pulling up the numbers now um blue jacket had six goals on 25 shots the save size four goals on 24 shots so like 20 out of 24 saves is not great for tarasov uh and neither goalie has been great to start the season here let's be honest but um they keep outscoring their woes for the most part, you know, um, or they keep finding a way to make the other goalies look worse than their goalie, which like, honestly, is not nothing. They did it with the Avalanche last week. Uh, they've just done it uh, earlier this week with the Sabres. Um, Devin Levi, who had had a really great start to the season, had a 760 save percentage on the night. Uh, 19 saves on 25 shots. So, like, it's not great, you know? But Blue Jackets continuing to uh, continuing to motor along. Uh, again, they're scoring a bunch of goals. I think I just saw a stat when I was scrolling Twitter when I woke up. Um, it's 9.30 here where I'm in Vegas right now. Um, but I, uh, I was scrolling Twitter earlier, and I saw um, that... This is the most the, the most goals the Blue Jackets have ever scored through the first four games of the season. So that's fun, if nothing else. Um, Blue Jackets have moved up to fourth in the league in terms of goals for per game. Um, they've already scored six goals a game twice in the season. And again, it's been four games. So, you know, like I said, that's fun. Um, I, am, I am enjoying this brand of hockey. Do I think it's sustainable? I do not. Um, because the shooting percentage will fall down to earth sooner or later. Um, and that is not necessarily like stressful. That's just kind of a thing that's going to happen. You know, the Blue Jackets are not going to score six goals on 25 shots every single game. Um, so hopefully the goaltending picks up and the, uh, for when the shooting falls down, you know, um, the shooting percentage right now, I'm just trying to pull it up. Uh, NHL.com does not seem to want to give me the team shooting percentage. But um, things are, again, are things unsustainable? Maybe. But at the end of the day, uh, the Blue Jackets are above league average in shots for per game. And also above league average in uh, shots against per game, I believe. Um, yeah, they are seventh in the league in shots against per game. The only teams, or fifth, uh, sixth, excuse me, I can count. The only teams that are allowing fewer shots per game are 
the Avalanche, the Oilers, the Hurricanes, the Knights, and the Lightning. So ostensibly five playoff contenders, um, which I think is uh, is not necessarily about the the Buffalo game specifically, but I do think is fun and neat and cool. Um, again, the shooting percentage will come back down to earth. Presumably, the goaltending will pick it up a little bit. Um, but the Blue Jackets are suppressing shots at a rate that they did not do at all last season. Um, I would love to see more shots for for them. Uh, but right now, I just looked it up. Uh, the Blue Jackets are allowing about nine shots a game less than they were for the entirety of last season. And small sample size, they're four games in. Like Again, things will reduce to the mean. But as of right now, the defensive... Structure looks so much better, looks so much improved. I just wish the goaltending could hold up because, like I said, they're not always going to be able to outscore um, goaltenders allowing four goals on, like, two or three expected goals against. You know, um, I would like 900, a 900 save percentage from my goalies at least, you know? Um, and as of right now, they're, they're just not, they're not giving us that, which is, um, both concerning and frustrating. I think a lot of people do not have a ton of faith in Elvis, um, which is honestly fair at this point. Um, I don't think he's, he hasn't done much over the last couple of seasons to kind of show people that he can be a, um, a, a top goalie in this league, let's say. Um, he's 0-2 on the season. He's got an 854 save percentage. But then Daniil Tarasov is 2-0 on the season, and he has an 852 save percentage. He's allowed four goals in each of his starts. Elvis has allowed uh, between three. I think he allowed three goals in one game and four goals in the other game. So, like, seven goals over two games versus Tarasov's eight goals over two games. Neither of them have been great, but I feel like there was a lot more pressure, I guess, for Tarasov specifically to perform because he has much higher potential. I think team the the fan base is not as disillusioned with Tarasov as they are with Elvis. I'm still seeing a lot of people being like, "Why don't they just get rid of both of them and call up Jack Reeves?" Because uh, unsustainable. Again, this is unsustainably bad goaltending. Um, Tarasov, I feel like, is typically speaking a slow starter. And I feel like you're just kind of seeing what you want to believe, what you want to see with with Jack Greaves. I like Jack Greaves a lot. I think he's a very good goalie. Do I think he's an NHL starter? Absolutely not. He's 22 years old, maybe 23. Um, was very good in AHL last year. Was good in the NHL when he needed to be. I do not think that they should get rid of both Elvis and Tarasov and just like throw Jack Greaves to the wolves. That's not. That's not how this regime is doing things anyway. You know, we look at Matejchuk in the a in the AHL. We look at how it's taken Juracek this long to get into. I say this long, like it's it's been four games. It's fine, you know. And we'll talk about Juracek in uh, in a minute here. But um, for better or worse, this is the goaltending the Blue Jackets have. If they can shift Elvis out, which I don't think is like a um, an actual option. For this team, that contract, the poor start to the season. Um, I completely understand why he's why he needs a break after um the game against Florida, the home opener. Like it's the second game, the second home opener in four years where he's had to honor a teammate who has died, you know? Um, and they both died in unexpected and awful ways. So like I am unsurprised that uh he's maybe not doing so great in terms of uh you know being in a good place right now, and I know that it's listed as physical fatigue officially, but like that's sometimes that's how grief manifests. Sometimes that's how you know PTSD manifests. That's how trauma manifests. Sometimes is that it affects you physically. So like we're not gonna we're not gonna dunk on Elvis for being on. He's not even on IR. He's just um he is just not in the lineups at the minute. But the goaltending is for better or worse, it is what it is. It's going to be Elvis and Tarasov for the bulk of the season. Jack Reeves is going to get reps just because this team is cursed, and we'll talk about the curse in a minute. Um, and so, you know, one or both players will get, one or both goalies will be injured for at least some of this season, you know. So we'll see Greaves. Um, my guess is he plays probably between 10 and 15 games this season. And, like, I kind of hope it's not more. I'm going to knock on wood uh, because, again, I don't think this team can can 
deal with another big injury blow. Um, which let's take a quick break and then we'll talk about how cursed we are as a team. Uh, because the player that potentially was off to the hottest start of any blue jacket and looked the best of any blue jacket is now out, quote, not short term. So we'll talk about what that means in just a second here on Locks on Blue Jackets. First, I want to talk about FanDuel, because you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel. They are America's number one sportsbook for a reason. So if you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the little stats, you can do live play-by-play, and so much more on the very same page where you place your bet. So you don't have to oh, have 700 ESPN tabs open like I do when I'm doing fantasy hockey. You can just go to FanDuel.com, you can find the game that you want to bet on, and they have all the information that you need right there on the page. It's so good. It's so easy to use. It's like... So efficient. I love efficiency. Um, I love to not have to have 700 different tabs open. And that's what FanDuel offers me, unlike uh, other sports betting uh, websites. And here's the best bit. If you place your first $5 bet on FanDuel today, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Where that's, and that's you don't have to win. You don't have to lose. Like Just place $5, a $5 bet and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets that you can spend on literally whatever you want. So that's FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. Again, FanDuel.com. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. Uh, we've talked about goaltending is uh, is going to be an issue sooner rather than later, despite the um, promising, shall we say, play of the, uh, of the defenseman and the forwards. But uh, I don't know what tonight's going to look like because we are going through more injuries sounds like Branson may or may not need surgery on on his uh upper body injury again they're being very um cagey about it which is fine and like that's a, that's a, an organization decision um but you lose Branson against the panthers the very next game you lose a kent johnson who is an even bigger deal on the blue jackets such a hot start to the season. Like I think he had five points in his first four games. Um, had an assist in the game against Buffalo before he got hurt. Um, and that's it's just that's a tough loss. You know he's looked so good to start the season. Again, players have hot starts and then kind of fade away a little bit. But he has looked. And again, it's tough to say. Like whether something is or isn't sustainable, but like he looked sustainably good, if that makes sense. Two goals, three assists, um, was playing on the penalty kill, was playing on the power play, was playing a ton at even strength. Like he was leading the team in ice time amongst forwards. Uh, on average, he's averaging, I think, probably just under 20 minutes a night now. He played 1646 before getting hurt. Um, and I believe he got hurt in the either the end of the second period or the start of the third period. So, like, he probably still had another six or so minutes of, of ice time in him uh, for the third period. But tough loss. And it sounds like he's going to be out long term as well. Like, I I don't love to watch players getting injured over and over and over again. Um, I did watch the, the um, Johnson in the Johnson fall a couple of times. I didn't get to watch the game live. We did listen on the radio. We were in the car um, driving um, for a million hours. But um, to me, that looks like a broken wrist, which my guess is six to eight weeks, um, which is not great. Uh, and I think long-term injury is a, a scary word for things. Um, but I think, to me anyway, and this is kind of the difference between short-term and long-term, I think is short-term is something that can be fixed with IR, which um, the IR rules are, um, you have to be on IR for 10 days from the time of the injury. So you can like backdate NHL IR and you can backdate um, NHL IR, uh, long-term IR as well. Um, I'm just pulling up the IR rules for um, the Blue Jackets. Um, a minimum, okay, a minimum of seven days. Uh, so that's, you know, he's going to be out at least a week. My guess is more than that, just because of that's a broken wrist, you know? Um, and then long-term IR is, uh, you have to be expected to miss at least 10 NHL games 
and 24 days of the NHL season. So whichever one of those is longer, I believe, um, they're not going to use long-term IR because they don't need the like the cap space. I think if they put anyone on IR, they will actually drop below the salary floor, which is, you know, they can't do that. Um, so they're not going to put them on long-term IR, but that's kind of how I see short-term versus long-term. Is To me, short-term feels like a couple of weeks. Anything longer than a couple of weeks, I feel like is long term. If you like, if you hit a month, that feels long term to me. So, six to eight weeks feels like maybe best case scenario for Kent Johnson. There's no update, no news on again whether he is going to need surgery, whether he's going to be out longer than that. Like honestly, if it is a bone break, that might be better because a bone break is way better than a sprain or like a muscle tear or something like that. You know, like. Less so with wrists, I feel like, but like with ankles specifically, you know, if you break your ankle, then you're back in a couple months. If you sprain your ankle, especially if it's like a high ankle sprain, like that is potentially a month long process, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go, I'm going to pencil Johnson missing for the next um, six to eight weeks at least, which that will put him back mid-December-ish, maybe the start of December. He's young. He's hopefully a fast healer. So my guess is that we won't see him until December. Um, which is about the time that we should get Dmitry Vronkov back uh, and potentially Gabranson as well. Again, they're being very cagey on what Gabranson's specific injury is. Um, my guess, again, is wrist or elbow or maybe a dislocated shoulder. He, I don't know if it's the shoulder that he separated. Um, at, not last season, but the season before that. But the point here is, this team is so cursed. This team is so unlucky. And I see a lot of people talking about, like, what are the trainers doing about this? Why don't they have any strength and conditioning coaches? And, like, similar to the torn labrum epidemic of, of last season or the season before, a broken bone is not something you can, like, condition your way out of. You know, you can't train to make your bones stronger. There are things you can do to, like, mitigate injury. And there are things you can do to, like, you know, you can, in theory, you can, like, learn to fall the right way, but Ken Johnson didn't see that coming. Like, he went head over heels. Um, it's tough to break a fall like that. Like, it's better training would not have stopped him from breaking his wrist, which, again, we don't know that's what's happened. I'm just guessing here. But, like, I'm seeing a lot of people being like, they need to fire the medical team. They need to get rid They get need to get a new conditioning and strength and strength team, like, why is the team so soft? Why is this team so fragile? And like, honestly, a lot of it is just bad luck. Like, again, similar to the torn labrum, you can't like strengthen condition your way out of breaking your wrist or dislocating your shoulder, like muscle strains, um, things like that. Um, yes, you can kind of try to mitigate that. You can change how you're training. I know there was I mean, this was this is going back a while now, like maybe what six or so seasons. But there was that season that Sergei Bobrovsky kept getting injured, and it was like all groin stuff. And they brought in another, um, a different strength and conditioning guy, or they, you know, brought in a different doctor, and they changed the way he was training. And then that basically eliminated all of these like groin injuries and, and issues that he was having. So, like, yes, there are some injuries where you can mitigate this kind of thing, but right now, I don't think any of the legitimate injuries can be chalked up to well they should have trained harder or they should have a better strength and conditioning staff um you know it sounds like jenna had shoulder surgery so it's how that sounds to me like some kind of again separated shoulder especially the the time he's out for um Vronkov, bad hit not bad hit like the hit was fine just a bad timing it, i think it, he was off balance maybe again potentially something that could be mitigated with strength and conditioning but i'm not convinced and then uh Gabranson and um johnson both awkward falls collisions with teammates um sucks but there's not like i don't think there's anything that the team could have done to stop either of those injuries happening so it is what it is you know um let's talk a little bit about the game tonight uh because the blue jackets are playing the wild again uh, this time at Nationwide, and David Juracek is making his season debut, and I want to talk about that specifically. So we're going to do that in just a second. Here on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, let's talk about game time. I love to go to live events, especially live sports. 
Uh, and Game Time has the best ticket deals in the world. And not just for sports. They've got music. They've got theater. They've got comedy. Um, my wife is at a musical fe- music festival this weekend. And we got that ticket on Game Time. We quite often will get Sharks tickets on Game Time last minute because... We finish, we finish work, we don't have plans. We're like, hey, let's go to a Sharks game. Tickets are like 20 bucks. And you can toggle on fees with game time so you don't get surprised like you do with other ticketing services. Um, I'm really mad that the Vegas Golden Knights are out of town while I'm here in Vegas this weekend because I would love to go to a game. And again, game time has so many good deals. It's the only thing I use for specifically hockey, which is typically what I use it for, but it's the only thing I use. If I need a ticket to get in, I'm looking on game time first not anywhere else. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. Thanks for making us your first listen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about tonight's game against the Wild. Um, I say tonight's game. It's in like five hours. It's fine. Seven hours. I can do math. We're doing great here. Um, Blue Jackets playing the Wild again. Now, I didn't get a chance to watch the original Wild game live because I was at my bachelor party. Um, but I watched a bunch of it back. And honestly, I think they played extremely well in that game um, and got unlucky. Not unlucky. Like, the Wild are a good team. You know, despite what many, many Wild fans seem to say, um, the Wild fa- the Wild haven't actually lost in regulation yet. They have two wins and they have two reg- uh, two um, overtime losses, one overtime loss and one shootout loss. Um, but they've got wins against the Blue Jackets and wins against St. Louis. Uh, coming into this game on a... Is it a streak if you've won one game in a row? I don't know. But... The Wild are are doing pretty good. Um, they're doing very differently than the Blue Jackets in terms of like how they're going about their games, um, which seems to be they are going all defense. We are not going to allow any goals. Um, and if we score, if we score some goals, great. Uh, they are averaging three goals a game, uh, which is not terrible, honestly. Um, that's so they've scored twelve goals over the last four games. Um, Blue Jackets obviously four point two five, so they're score they're outscoring the Wilds by like a goal and a quarter, um, but the Wild are allowing way fewer goals per game than the Blue Jackets. They're allowing two and a quarter goals a game, which is good for sixth in the league. Blue Jackets are allowing three point seven five. So again, we'll see which which goaltender we get tonight. Uh, whether we will get the goaltender where the Blue Jackets are like, well, we'll just kind of outscore what's happening. Um, I don't know off the top of my head which goalie is starting for the Wild. My guess is Gustafsson. He's their starter. He's 2-0-1 on the season and has a 948 save percentage, um, is allowing just over a goal and a half per game. Um, Blue Jackets obviously going with Tarasov. Mosleykin's out uh, with, with physical fatigue, and they're not going to throw Jack Greaves to the Wolves, um, which... The Blue Jackets don't have a back-to-back until November now, so my guess is Elvis will be back by then. So I don't think we'll see Jack Reeves, um, unless, you know, knock on wood, something really, really terrible happens. We get another injury, Jack Reeves has to come in. Um, but my guess is we'll probably see Tarasov for the next handful of games until Elvis returns. Um, so can the Blue Jackets outscore the Wild? Can they take advantage of maybe the Wild will start Mark Andre Fleury? Um, I don't think the Wild played last night, um, and I don't believe they play tomorrow either. I'm just pulling up the the schedule for that to double check. Um, they did not play last night. Uh, tomorrow they okay. They're playing Florida tomorrow, so actually. Maybe they want Philip Gustafson against Florida. Maybe we will see Mark andre Fleury, which is, um, honestly, Ella Flower might be for the best for the Blue Jackets in terms of um, facing the the goaltender with the less good stats right now. Um, and maybe they can figure out their goaltending without having to figure out how to score past Philip Gustafson, who has been one of the better goalies in the league to start the season. Um, let's talk about some lineup changes. Obviously, Johnson is out. The Blue Jackets do not currently have 12 healthy forwards. So um, 
I don't know why they haven't called someone up from the monsters who are like literally right there. You know, they just sent Dylan Gambrell down. Um, and I believe the waiver, the way the waivers waiver wire works is they can call him up and then um, he can play a handful of games or spend a, a certain amount of days on the NHL roster without having to be sent back down. So like they can call him up, they can call James Malatesta up. Um, you know, there are, there are options for the Blue Jackets to call up. I don't know if they don't want to mess with what's going on in Cleveland. They've had kind of a, a bouncy start to the season, let's say. Um, but it looks like the Blue Jackets are going with 11 and 7, um, which also doesn't feel super wise considering it sounds like Chinikov is going through uh, something. He had x-rays yesterday. Apparently they came back clean. He missed the optional skate yesterday, um, skated this morning, will be playing tonight. But if I feel like if you have 11 forwards and one of those guys isn't 100% healthy, then you there is a chance that you play the game with 10 forwards. But what that does mean is the Blue Jackets are rolling seven defensemen, which means that we have a David Yerichek season debut. Um, I'm not convinced he's going to get a ton of ice time, which is going to be frustrating, but I am glad he's getting into a game. Um, and, you know, we talked a ton about Yerichek in the last episode, which I think was Thursday's episode. I have no concept of, of how days work anymore. Um, but that seems like... It's it's a good thing to get him into the game, you know. My guess is he probably plays about ten minutes, maybe twelve. Rolling seven defensemen is tough, um, unless you want to put one of them on the fourth line wing and then just kind of see how that goes. I don't think that that's going to be in the cards for the Blue Jackets. Although I do think it would be very funny to put like Jack Johnson on third line on fourth line wing. Uh, it's not going to happen. Blue Jackets will probably rotate um, seven defensemen. I wish there was a a way that I could look up what the record of like a the Blue Jackets are with with a seven and eleven lineup because I don't remember the last time they did that uh, and b just kind of teams in general because I feel like a seven eleven lineup or some teams have gone like thirteen and five I feel like in uh, in recent memory um, and it just doesn't feel optimal you know I would love to know what the record is for teams when they are rolling seven eleven uh, eleven forwards and seven defensemen um, but. We'll see how it goes. I'm expecting this to be a much tighter game in terms of scoring than uh, the Buffalo game, um, just because I think Minnesota is uh, a better team than Buffalo. Um, their power play is is going along at a clip at a, a cool 30%, so please stay out of the box. Don't do crime. The good news is their penalty kill is uh, almost the worst in the league right now. They are... Um, only killing two-thirds of their penalties, which is not great. Blue Jackets, they're only killing three-quarters of theirs, but that three-quarters is better than two-thirds, so I'll take it. Um, we've already talked about a bunch of the uh, the other kind of team-wide stats. Um, so, stay out of the box. Maybe don't allow four goals on 25 shots, which is, you know, easier said than done. Um, we'll see how it goes. I, we ha I haven't seen enough Tarasov to know whether he's a goalie that, like, plays better the more he plays in the same way that like so Corpusalo feels like the key guy to me here is that the typically speaking anyway and with Columbus this was true I don't know that it was as true in in Ottawa but the more he plays the better he gets he is a he is a goalie of routine he is a creature of habit and he was not a very good backup for the Blue Jackets but he was a perfectly fine starter for the Blue Jackets for the like season and a quarter that he he did that for um, before they really moved to a full like 1A, 1B situation with Mosleykins and they chose Mosleykins as their future starter. Anyway, I don't know if Tarasov is a guy that is going to get better the more he plays or if he's a guy that is just has to, you know, go through. I don't think he's got the yips in the same way that like Alexander Georgiev in Colorado has the yips. Um, he was allowed 20 goals so far this season um, and the, the the Avalanche went like 0-4 to start the season. It was, uh, you know, uh, the Avalanche fans were really starting to panic there, but... I would love a, a good, solid, again, I would like a 900 save percentage out of Tarasov tonight. So let's see if we can get that. Um, keep scoring goals. Like, that top line is going to continue to cook. Uh, Chinikov and Marchenko both have six points in five games so far. Um, two goals, four assists each. Sean Monaghan has uh, two goals and two assists in four games. Um, that line, again, just continues to, to keep on going and... Um, I guess that's, they showed me because I have gone, I went on the record, you know, a couple of times for different things of like, what if they put Adam Fantilli 
uh, in Monaghan's space? Or what if they put Ken Johnson in Chinikov's space? Like, what if they mix up the lines like that? But this top line is really uh, is really going, um, which is fun to see. So hopefully, again, is that sustainable? I'm not quite sure yet, but hopefully that keeps going. Um, Adam Pantilli has two goals in four games. Um, we'd love to see that keep going. Um, he's managed to bring his face-off percentage up as well after that Buffalo game. Um, you know, it's it's not all quite all coming together. Um, TM, you know, the um, the Emperor's New Groove gif, but things are going fine so far. Um, Wierenski and Severson, both point-a-game uh, players. Jake Christensen very quietly has three assists in four games. He's been a real kind of pleasant surprise this season um he was not a guy that i expected to to crack the top four but i guess he never since saw something in him that that we didn't and i have again been very pleasantly surprised by jake christensen's play he again is not like super flashy he's not you know he's not zakarensky but it looks like he's holding his own it looks like he's doing um he's doing pretty well out there uh i don't believe he's been scored on yet uh in at even strength um, he hasn't had a ton of power play time. Uh, and again, he's got three assists and there's a plus three. Plus three is a, a, not a, a great stat to use for this kind of thing. But he, uh, that that Christians and Severson pairing have been very good. And again, that Wierenski Provorov pairing have been very good. Like, I'm going to knock on wood one final time before, uh, before I wrap up here. But like, this is a, a pretty competent top four for the Blue Jackets thus far. Obviously, now that I've said this, tonight is going to be an absolute tire fire. And it's... It's going to be a nightmare, but like thus far, and again, early returns, small sample size, four games into the season, but early returns are looking quite promising with this top four. Um, would love to see, again, would love to see Juracek get more time. Would love to see Harris get more time. Um, but as of right now, I'm not going to rock the boat too much in terms of lineup. You know, if it's working, it's working, you know? So... I was going to do predictions, and I don't know what my prediction is. I think I might go with... Well, I don't remember exactly what my prediction was last time. I think it was 3-2 to two overtime win for the Blue Jackets with a Marchenko goal. So I think I might just say that again. I think it's going to be 3-2, to two, and let's say a Marchenko game-winning goal. That feels... Again, that top line is going to continue to buzz. Uh, so let's go with a... Let's go with a... a uh, Kirill the Thrill, which I know is the name for Kirill Kaprizov, but I like it, so I'm using it for Marchenko as well. Um... And that's kind of all I've got for today. Uh, we're actually going to do a post-game podcast. Uh, I don't know whether it'll be live or not. We're going to see if we if we can go live. We'll see if the uh, hotel Wi-Fi will uh, will support that. But um, thank you for listening. Making it your first listen of the day every single day. Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. Uh, you can find the show at uh, LO underscore Blue Jackets on Twitter for as long as that site continues to exist. And uh, if you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockdownbluejackets at gmail.com. Thank you once again for listening. And until tomorrow or until later today, make sure you stay locked on.